What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with the $35 Atomic Pi single board computer and today we're going to be running some RetroPie x86 on this unit. I had a lot of requests for this. If you're not familiar with this board, I've already made several videos. I'll leave a playlist in the description and by the way, this is probably my last video on the Atomic Pi. I've already covered a lot of stuff with this board. But basically what we have here is an x86 single board computer powered by an Intel Atom X5 at 1.44 GHz. It will turbo up to 1.92, 2 GB of DDR3 1600 MHz RAM, and this thing costs $35. I'll also leave a link in the description on how to install RetroPie x86. You're going to do it on this like you would with any other PC. I've made a couple of videos on that also. So today we're going to be testing out some stuff that the Raspberry Pi doesn't run well, like PSP, Dreamcast, N64, and the arcade version of Killer Instinct 2 running with LR MAME 2010. For some reason, at the time of making this video, I couldn't get the internal scraper in RetroPie to work correctly. I was able to scrape my arcade games, but nothing else was scraping for some odd reason. I think the first thing we're going to test here is PSP emulation. I'm going to go with Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, followed up by God of War Chains of Olympus. This is using the standalone version of PPSSPP that you can download through the RetroPie menu. It's not the LR version of PPSSPP. The FPS is listed in the top right hand corner. We are at full speed. I'm at 1x resolution with this game. And a lot of these PSP games are going to work great on the Atomic Pi running RetroPie at 2x to even 3x depending on the game. You are going to run into some games that aren't going to run well like Killzone and Midnight Club and even God of War struggles here even with frame skip on. Those are just three really hard games to emulate with the PPSSPP emulator. Next up we have God of War Chains of Olympus and it's doing a good job but there are a lot of slowdowns here so as soon as we get some more characters on screen it's going to slow down tremendously. And like I mentioned even with frame skip on which I personally hate we're still going to get some dips. It all comes down to the optimization of the PPSSPP emulator. Even on my high end rig I still get dips with this game. I'll go ahead and enable frame skip. We're just going to set it to 1, so this is going to half the original speed of the game, so it'll be running at 30 instead of 60, but even then, we get dips down into the 24 FPS range, and the sound is just all messed up. Next up, we have some Dreamcast emulation. This is using Raycast. I previously did a video using Redream, and Redream actually works a lot better on this board. But 3D games are really going to struggle with Raycast in RetroPie on the Atomic Pi, and 2D games are even slow. And we'll move to a 2D game in Dreamcast. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Unfortunately, we just can't get full speed with Raycast. N64 emulation works really well on the Atomic Pi. This is using the Moopin Core, but I've also tested Project 64 in Windows and it runs just as well, if not better. Unfortunately, no matter what N64 core I use on this board, I can't get Rogue Squadron to work. It just will not display. It gives me a black screen, I can get an FPS counter if I enable it in the settings, but that's about it. I just can't get it to run. But as you can see, Conker's Bad Fur Day works really well on this x86 platform. Now, I've tested this on a ton of other single board computers, and this is just a hard one to emulate with Moopin. Double O Seven Goldeneye is a treat to play on the Atomic Pi using Retro Pi. You just kind of breeze through here; it's super smooth.
I also wanted to test out some PS1 emulation. Now I know it's not hard to emulate, it does work well on the Raspberry Pi 3, but I wanted to make sure that we had full speed PS1 emulation on the Atomic Pi also. This is Bloody Roar 2, one of my favorite fighting games, and this is actually harder to emulate than Tekken 3, so I wanted to throw this in here. And finally, the arcade version of Killer Instinct 2 running in LR MAME 2010. Killer Instinct 1 also works with this same core. This is the only core I could get it to work with. I previously made a video of Killer Instinct 1 and Killer Instinct 2 running in the standalone version of MAME on the Atomic Pi, but I had a lot of people ask me if I could get it to work with an LR core, so here we are. If you've ever tried to run Killer Instinct 1 or Killer Instinct 2 on the Raspberry Pi 3 using the same core, you know it runs at about 9 FPS. Here we have full speed emulation. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. The Atomic Pi is great for Retro Pi, and I didn't test any SNES, Genesis, 32X, PC Engine, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, because all of that's going to run fine on here. I wanted to get some higher end stuff that just doesn't perform well on the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, the Atomic Pi does a really good job with most systems except for Dreamcast. Now I've had a lot of people ask me if this is going to run GameCube or PS2. No, it's not going to run it at full speed. This is a low end chip. It's a $35 single board computer. Same price as the Raspberry Pi. And if you can pick one up for $35 with free Prime shipping from Amazon, I definitely recommend it. Should be back in stock in a few days. I'll leave links in the description. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to check out my other Atomic Pi videos. I'll leave a playlist in the description. Got a lot of great stuff over there. I've run Android, Windows, Lubuntu. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with this board. It's not a super powerful unit, but for the price, it's well worth it. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.